You think it's healthy to obsessively collect things? You can't connect with other people, so you fill your life with stuff. Just like all the rest of these pathetic collector losers. Well, my name is Bruce Chambers. Um, I, I have collected in the past. I've collected Kinder Surprise. Basically, when I saw the Kinder Egg in the store and the package, it, it intrigued me because I'm intrigued by packaging. The first ones that I got was an airplane. The airplanes that, in particular at the time were these World War I airplanes. And I always liked World War I aircraft. The reason I collected these was, one, I was fascinated with what was in there. Two, I liked the little airplanes and I wanted to have them all. In my, walk, my journeys with walking the dog or just hiking alone back there, again in the springtime I just happened to notice things and pick them up. This is actually at the mouthpiece of an Indian peace pipe. Down along the creek I found musket balls from probably from the ambush. But I have found interesting bones too, part of a bear claw. Other things I just, I take because they're really neat. Just a Baltimore Oriole basket, a little hornet nest. Yeah, and these are just some owl pellets I found. Whoever guessed that this is what owl barf would look like. That was my favorite thing to find out there. My dog was rummaging around in the deep grass, so I went to go see what it was, and this thing was staring out from the grass. And it was pretty scary. It looks really nice next to my mother-in-law's picture. <laughs> it's been an interesting little journey for me out here, that's for sure. Hi, I'm Frank, and I collect Stephen King books. When uh, a book comes out, I follow it and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to the bookstore. First day it's out. I'd usually call first and like call four different bookstores. Do you have it in yet? Do you have it in yet? Do you have it in yet? I went through some trouble for it, but that's only because I'm an addict. It's, it's cool, like I'm not, you know, fiending. Yeah. I... But if there's a new book out and I don't have it, then I'm going to look for it. And that's when the addiction kicks in. There are people out there who collect stuff which I can call, you know, trash. I have an extensive collection of name tags and hair nets. I mean, it means nothing coming from me because obviously someone's going to look at this and be like, that is a lot of waste of money, like why would you buy all that? Go to the library. If everyone was exactly the same, it would be a boring world. My name is Jerry Leinhorst and I have what is called a very eclectic shop. There, is, there are a lot of people who are into collecting duckies. Blocks here of... Um, Something that I'm finding that grandparents are starting to collect all over again. This has uh, got a lot of renewed interest again. These are, are Matryoshka wind-up music boxes. I think they've actually been a collector item for probably a very, very long time. I have a mini collection of uh, tin canisters, nice old ones actually that I really like. I have a collection of, and this is going to sound a little bit silly, but they mean a lot to me, rocks from all over the world. If you can get the guys in your life a little bit interested in what you're collecting, they will be much better sports boat shopping because they've got something to look for. My name is Mary Friesen and these are shells that we collected for about 15 years on the beaches of Florida. It was interesting the first year we went, we went in a camper and then uh, we, we thought we had them washed good and we had them in a tray and all of a sudden on the way home uh, we had all kinds of smells in, in, the, in the camper and we found out that there were still animals there that had died in there and they <laughs> stank like everything so we had a... <laughs> She's got that all on film. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> if you want to keep it as a collection you need to have a place to put it and display it and so that you can look at it, at least have it for your own enjoyment, if not for other people. So, when I started traveling on the road and so on, and Mary had come with me, then the, uh, the different states and, and big cities we were at, then she would uh, uh, collect spoons. This is a Texas spoon. You see the, the big boots there. That uh, portrays Texas. Everything's big in Texas. This one is from Zimbabwe, Africa. Total, but there's 90 in the rack. 
plus the ones on the table. I've been collecting these for about 50 years. This one's from New Bern, uh, North Carolina. Spoons collection are personal. Are actually personal. It's it's fun to have them and to look at them, but it's not fun to clean them. I think there's a need for all of us to do some gathering. I think we're born with a gathering instinct. Collections and hobbies just emphasize individuality. Being being purposeful. It's it's hoarding something. I think uh, I think it's something that people people do pretty much because there's a I think there's an inherent need to, to collect in a way. Play all I mean do you actually play all these or well, I play them and I cherish them. Special too, I say. Look, see? Still got the uh, the old tagger on it. See never even played it. See? You just bought it. Don't and, touch it. Don't well, touch I, it. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't no, touch it. No, don't touch it. I was it. just pointing at it. I, well don't point even don't even point. point. No. It can't be played. Never. I mean I can I look at it? No. No, you see, don't look at that one.